guys, it's Terry Jordan, curator at the Customs House Museum and Cultural Center in Clarksville, Tennessee, and we are in for a real treat today. We are spending time down at the studio of artisan Audrey Deal McGever, uh, who's currently showing in our Jostens Gallery. So uh, let's take a quick peek and see what Audrey's got going on. Audrey, I see you've got some great new things working in progress right down here. Can you tell us a little bit about it? So everything I make starts on the potter's wheel, and I have a couple wheels in my studio because I teach lessons. Um, this is my main wheel, and yesterday I threw a handful of pots. You can see these casserole dishes. Um, a lot of these pieces are made in parts. So, you know, for example, these casserole dishes, I throw the base and I throw the lid separately. The lid actually gets thrown upside down. And then there's a lot of finishing work. So these casseroles end up getting trimmed where I use a loop tool with a sharp edge to remove the extra clay from the base to create this foot ring. And then I use that same process to remove the extra clay from the top of the lid to make sure it's a nice fit, make that lid nice and light. And then I have a lot of attachments. So with the casserole dishes, I have handles that get attached. With these pitchers, I actually, throw the piece and then cut out a little U-shape on the side and make a hand-built spout that gets attached in addition to the hand-built. So I really like carving with these very small loop tools that have a triangular front to them. And I'll use this little triangular corner to actually scoop out my lines. So carving tools are neat. They're kind of like different paint brushes. Depending on the size and the shape, you get a completely different type of line quality. I love how this is able to scoop out a little trough, which later I go in and I fill these carved lines with glaze. So my pieces look really dramatic when they're first carved. It seems like they'd end up having a ton of really deep texture when they're done, but actually the glaze I apply, which is where the color comes from, that really fills in these lines and ends up changing the way they feel quite a bit. I also like the sharp lines because the glaze will pool in these little crevices and break over the sharp edges. So you get a lot of variation in color. So after the pieces are carved, they have to dry out completely. So this piece has dried for probably three or four days now. And it's very, very fragile. If I were to bump this at all, it would just shatter. So now that it's dry, I can load it in my kiln over here. And this is kind of like a giant toaster oven. It has these electric coils that get hot, but there's a computer that controls this. And that's what makes it a little different is the natural cycle of clay being fired. You have to take it through different temperatures at different speeds so that you don't cause shock or, um, you don't, if you rush it too much, you'll end up with cracks and, and bad effects. So this piece would get fired for about 14 hours through that initial, we call it a bisque firing. And it would go very, very, very slowly up through about 500 degrees because we have to get all the residual water and moisture out of this piece. And then it goes really slowly around 1000 degrees too because that's when clay is going through molecular change. And after that point, it's actually hard. Um, right now, if I were to put this in a bucket of water, it would just turn into mud again. This is not permanent yet. So after you go through that change around 1000 degrees, it's actually becoming hard and it goes all the way up to about 1800 degrees. And then I let really slowly cool. So the whole process start to finish takes about 24 hours, but the 14 hours at the beginning are when the kiln's actually doing its work. The rest of the time it's just cooling. Um, and then it's ready to be glazed. So glaze is really different than paint. If you look in this bucket, it just looks like water with a bunch of stuff floating in it. And you can stir it all up and make it even, but um, this is, this doesn't have any binders or anything in it to make it stick to the pottery, um, which of course paint does. So. The whole reason why we bisque fire pieces or go through that initial firing is to make them very porous. And at that point, if I stir up this bucket of glaze and I dip it in, the piece will be sucking all the water out of the glaze and everything powdered floating in here will stick to the surface. So glaze does a couple things. First of all, it's usually when people add color, although there are ways to add color before you get to this glazing process too. Um, but even more importantly, glaze is generally what makes ceramics waterproof and food safe. 
So here's what some of the raw ingredients look like that go into my glaze recipes. The main ingredient is silica, and this is the glass former. Silica is actually a really common material on this planet. It's quite easy to find. Um, and there are other materials too, but the most important part in this blue glaze, which I know it doesn't look blue right now, it will look blue later, um, is cobalt. Cobalt carbon in it is the colorant. So there's a lot of chemistry involved in ceramics, and after this glaze goes, goes up to temperature and responds to the heat in the kiln and the oxidation environment, this will end up being a nice dark blue that will look like this. So a pretty big change before and after being fired. So I make my living off selling my work. Um, I keep a tally and I, on average, make about a thousand pieces of a year, which um, is not a lot compared to some potters who will create 50 of the exact same cup and they're a quick cylinder and they dip in a single color glaze. But my work is really slow and every single piece is different. I really never make two of the exact same thing. Even though I might repeat the same botanical motif, I'm not using stamps or stencils. Every piece is hand carved. The scale, the placement, that always changes. So there's a lot of variety in my work and a thousand pieces a year is pretty ambitious. <laughs> I get the joy of getting to meet my customers and form relationships with them. And many of them come back year after year and keep buying more work and show me pictures of their family recipes and my bowls. And it's just the best thing ever. That's, that gives my life so much meaning. So you can see I make a wide variety of work. This is a little different than what's in the museum. Um, most of what I make day to day is pieces for your kitchen, you know, cups, mugs, bowls, things that you can use. And it is all microwave, dishwasher, oven safe. Um, it really is meant to be used, even though it's quite ornate. So um, some of my pieces like this fancy bowl that has a lot of alterations on the lip, a lot of detail on the foot ring. Um, I do have people use these every single day, but there are a lot of these that are used for special occasions too, or for display pieces. Um, whereas I have my slightly more utilitarian pieces. I have dinner plates, things that people really do use every day. I, I work really hard to have an eclectic body of work where collectors can mix and match and create a set that only they will have. I think that's really interesting. Um, but at the same time, make sure that the work's cohesive enough to where you could mix and match any of these pieces on your table and it would still look good and make sense. I love ceramic specifically because it's the only art form that people interact in this intimate of a way. You know, like to get a cup that you actually put your mouth on. There aren't many artists who can create something that's used in such an intimate way. And I think given the state of our current super fast paced, pretty disposable culture, I think if I can make pieces that add intentionality to people's lives by making them slow down and enjoy their food a little bit more, or um, just enjoy the stories and the connections that come with handmade work, that's a big motivator for me. I really like that relationship with my customers and, and thinking that maybe I can enhance the moments of their daily lives and add a little bit more intentionality.